This is Covering the Spread, part of the FanDuel Podcast Network. Pretty fun day for baseball, where even though there are just 10 games for tonight, I'm finding a decent amount of value both in the money line department and in the strikeout prop department. So I feel pretty good about tonight's slate. What we'll do for today is break down the money lines I like, a couple of strikeout props as well to try to get you ready to have some fun on your Monday night. Welcome on into Covering the Spread. That's right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network and NumberFire.com. My name is Jim Sonis. I am a senior writer and analyst for number fire here to break down monday's mlb slate breaking down my favorite bets available right now over at fanduel sportsbook we'll dive into the money lines first and then the strikeout props in just one second but first a reminder to make sure you're subscribed to covering the spread wherever you get your podcast we were here every weekday talking mlb for today but also the open championship tomorrow at brandon gadula He'll break down his thoughts on uh, if Rory McIlroy can get the job done once again tomorrow. Find that right here on the Covering the Spread podcast feed, but also over on the FanDuel YouTube page and over on FanDuel TV+. Plus. Take your first swing at betting MLB on FanDuel and get 10 times your first bet amount in bonus bets, win or lose up to $200. That's right. Just bet 20 bucks and you'll land $200 in bonus bets, win or lose. That's 200 you can spend on betting everything from the money line, the over under to who you think is going to hit the first home run. All in that that is safe, secure and super easy to use plus when you win, you can get paid instantly. There's no better place to bet on MLB than FanDuel America's number 1 sports book. So sign up today and get up to $200 in bonus bets. FanDuel, official partner of Major League Baseball. Must be 21 plus and present in select states. First online real money wager only. $10 first deposit required. Bonus issued as non-withdrawable bonus bets that expire 14 days after receipt. Restrictions apply. See terms at sportsbook.fanduel.com. FanDuel is offering online sports wagering in Kansas under an agreement with Kansas Star Casino, LLC. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit FanDuel.com slash RG in Colorado, Iowa, Michigan, New Jersey, Ohio, Pennsylvania, Illinois, Tennessee, and Virginia. Call 1-800-NEXT-STEP or text next step to 533-42 in Arizona, 1-888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org slash chat in Connecticut. 1-800-9-WITH-IT in Indiana, 1-800-522-4700, or visit ksgamblinghealth.com in Kansas, 1-877-770-STOP-IN Louisiana. Uh, Visit mdgamblinghealth.org in Maryland, 1-800-GAMBLER.NET in West Virginia, or call 1-800-522-4700 in Wyoming. Hope is here. Visit gamblinghelplinema.org. Or call 800 327 for 24 7 support in Massachusetts, or call 1 877 Hope and Y or text Hope and Y in New York. Let's dig in now to the baseball for today and break down where I'm seeing value starting off with the money lines over at FanDuel Sportsbook. There are four of them with what I'm seeing as being decent values based on my model. The first one is going to be in one of the first games of the night. Actually, it did shift. That is the Orioles and the Dodgers. Orioles' money line was minus 106 earlier on. It is now out to minus 116. Now, that actually does make it a little bit tougher. Minus 116, 53.7% odds. Uh, I've got them at 53.7% to win as well. So we're actually going to scrub this recommendation because it's no longer a value. That is the glory of recording lies. So if you can find the Orioles' money line at... Minus 106, minus 105, somewhere in there. I would still be willing to take it because that's where I took it. But if it's minus 116 at FanDuel, that's going to be a tougher sell for me. Let's say hypothetically, though, you pull this open later on. Maybe it's moved back a bit. Maybe some, you know, there's been some buyback on the Dodgers, whatever it may be, or you can find a better number elsewhere. The reason I was on the Orioles money line to begin with was because I think Grayson Rodriguez might be a bit undervalued. Went back down to AAA. Pitched pretty well down there, and specifically what he did was he limited hard contact because that was his big bugaboo in the majors outside of walks. Uh, The two things were walks and hard contact. The hard contact issue did get better at AAA. The walks didn't really. Looking at Emma Sheehan on the other side, he's made four starts in the majors so far and still has not gotten the level of strikeouts that he got down in AA, which makes sense because the jump from AA to the big leagues is pretty tough. 
So I feel like these two pitchers are a bit more even than what the initial market was saying. And that's why I was on the Orioles money line at minus 106. So shop around, see what you can find here. If you can get the Orioles, um, you know, minus 106 is probably about as far as I was willing to go just because I was, I want typically two percentage points of value to take, to take a bite. And I was right around there. So I wanted around minus 106, minus 105, somewhere in there to be on the Orioles. Minus 116 is almost exactly dead on with my model. So um, if that's the best you can get, I probably would hold off on betting the Orioles for today. Let's check on the second one to see uh, if there is value there. A little bit of movement here as well, unfortunately. Uh, so again, the fun of recording in the morning. I still think this one, though, is a big enough value for you to take it. Second money line recommendation for today is going to be the Marlins. Uh, their money line is now minus 104 at FanDuel Sportsbook. It was even money earlier on. So a bit of movement toward the Marlins here, and I think that movement is correct. It is a very tough matchup here for Jesus Lazardo, the starter for the Marlins, facing off with the Cardinals because they got Paul Goldschmidt, they've got Nolan Arenado, a lot of guys who can bash lefties. But sample on the Cardinals against lefties this year is pretty big, and their WRC plus is 106. I think that's kind of emblematic of this Cardinals team where – they just kind of underwhelmed and they haven't met expectations in a lot of ways. So maybe they get better because they've got a lot of dudes who can mash lefties and they haven't done that yet so far. And you expect them to get better as time goes along, but it is also a pretty large sample. And Lazardo is a very good pitcher. He's made 19 starts this year, 29% strikeout rate, 3.38 skill interactive ERA. Batted ball suppression, not his strength by any means, but it's also not a massive weakness either. Miles Nicholas starting for the Cardinals here. He got to start Friday before that game was suspended. So when three innings there, about 34 pitches, he's a horse. So I don't feel like he'll have any issues bouncing back after effectively was a bullpen session on Friday and going full length on Monday. But I feel like he'll probably let a, balls, a lot of balls in play here. The Marlins don't strike out much. Uh, Nicholas in general, not a high strikeout guy. So I do feel like the... Marlins are the right side of this bet. I've got the Marlins win odds at 53.5%. The implied odds now minus 104 are 51%. So still around two percentage points value. That's enough for me to feel good about it. So I think the Marlins, even with it being minus 104 now versus even money earlier on, still enough value there for you to bet them on the money line, taking on the Cardinals for tonight. So the, the Marlins minus 104, our first actual recommendation we'll have for today. Let's see if this one has moved as well. This is between the Rangers and the Rays. This one is still where it was earlier on. That is the Rangers money line, even money. And I feel like this line is kind of telling you they are assuming that Shane McClanahan is fully healthy because the Rangers are a very good team. I know Dane Dunning is not the same level as McClanahan, but the Rangers in general, a very good team. And you're getting them even money at home against McClanahan. And McClanahan... We have not seen him be fully healthy for a while now. We haven't seen him get a full workload in several weeks. And I feel like it's a little bit concerning that he did get pushed back. I think he was supposed to start on Saturday or Sunday. They pushed him back instead to pitch on Monday. That could have been because they had the postponement. There was some funky stuff there. Maybe that's why. But it's still a little bit concerning to me that he got pushed back given the amount of time he has had to rest up since that back injury flared up. So a little bit concerning there. Opposing pitcher is Dane Dunning. He does not get many strikeouts. In fact, I think there is value in his strikeout prop under for tonight. But really good job at suppressing hard contact, even when he's moved into rotation. If you look at that time, getting ground balls, hard hit rate is pretty okay. Now, both these offenses are very good. So we could see some runs here, but the Rangers have a 140 WRC plus against lefties. So if McClanahan is not 100% healthy, that could be a pretty big issue for him. The Rays, WRC plus against righties down to 119 right now. So my model puts the Rangers win odds at 57.4%. Their implied odds are 50%. I feel pretty good about that. So the Rangers money line, even money. I feel good about that. And we'll be talking about this game later on. We talk about some strikeout props as well, pertaining to my skepticism that McClanahan is going to get a full leash for tonight. 
Final money line we are on for today is going to be the Royals. They are at plus 114, taking on the Tigers. And I do want the Royals side of this one over at FanDuel Sportsbook. They're facing Matt Manning. And Manning is a guy who just came back off the IL. You want to see him look good because still a younger pitcher, a guy who had a lot of prospect type. And you want to root for that kind of guy, hoping he can be fully healthy. And through five starts, he has a 3.72 ERA. But the underlying numbers... Pretty concerning. Not only does Manning have just a 6.1% swinging strike rate, but he's letting up a 45% hard hit rate and a 54% fly ball rate. So what that means is he's not getting whiffs. He's letting up some dangerous hard contact. So he could let up base runners and then let up dangerous contact after that. That's a pretty brutal combination. He's facing Jordan Lyles. Lyles had an awful year. I think he's lost like 11 games so far. Obviously, win-loss records are pretty bad, but, you know, it's not great when you've lost 11 games, regardless of the circumstances. But I would say Lyles has cut way back on his curve usage over his past six starts. In that time, letting him just a 30% hard hit rate, a very, very good number. So when you combine the fact that I think that Manning may be due for some negative regression with the fact that Lyles has been a bit better recently, that to me says I can feel okay taking the Royals money line at plus 114. My model has the Royals favored in this game. So getting plus money at 114, I think that's more than enough to feel good about it. So we'll take the Royals plus 114 on the money line for the final one for tonight. So to recap the money lines here, we've got the Royals money line plus 114, the Rangers money line, even money, the Marlins money line, maybe you can still get even money. It is minus 104 at FanDuel Sportsbook right now. And then if you can get the Orioles back out to minus 105, minus 106, somewhere in that range, I would show value on them as well at that number. As far as strikeout props go, let's go back to that Rangers versus Rays game. And in that game, I feel like you could actually talk yourself into unders on both the pitchers uh you got mcclanahan under five and a half minus 112 dane dunning under four and a half is minus 116 let's play around with this here uh build out a little same game parlay again i don't typically do same game parlays uh but i think in this specific instance where i'm showing value on three separate spots in the same game if you hypothetically wanted to do so the dunning under strikeout market is counter to the money line for the Rangers because more strikeouts implies more success. And so you want to keep that in mind for sure. But the McClanahan one does a mesh pretty well with the Rangers money line. I do show value in all three of these legs individually. So if you were to pair the Dunning under strikeouts, uh, four and a half with McClanahan under five and a half and the Rangers money line, that gets you to plus 582 at FanDuel Sportsbook on the same game parlay. I think that's totally fine. Uh, I think that is something to consider. As you know, personal preference for me is typically not to do that. So let's go back here and talk about my favorite bet in this game beyond the Rangers money line, which would be McClanahan under five and a half strikeouts, which is currently minus 112 over at FanDuel Sportsbook. And it's a lot of the same stuff we discussed when talking about McClanahan earlier on, where I need convincing that he is fully Shane McClanahan. And let's say hypothetically McClanahan is fully good to go. Got some bullpens in before uh, between his his uh, short start and between this one he was on the IL. Let's say he's fully ramped up. Even then, it's a tough spot because the Rangers as a team have a 19.9% strikeout rate against lefties on the current active roster. So it could be tough to get here even if he is fully healthy. So what I want is I want McClanahan to prove me wrong. I like Shane McClanahan a lot as a pitcher. So I want him to go out there and shove. I want him to go out there and pitch really well. If he does that, I will stop betting against him on the money line, stop betting the under on the strikeout markets because I want him healthy. And I don't think he's healthy right now. So to me, that says this number is too high until we get confirmation that McClanahan is fully healthy. So I'll take McClanahan under five and a half strikeouts minus 112. Again, if you want to go McClanahan under, Dunning under uh, the Rangers money line, that's plus 582 for a same game parlay over at FanDuel Sportsbook. I think that's okay. And uh, I am okay with that for sure. And not my personal way to go, not the way I'm going to do it personally, but if you want to have some more fun, uh, make it a bit more juicy for you, you can do it that way as well. Second strikeout prop for today for me is going to be in the late game. That is the Twins and the Mariners. I'm going to take Sonny Gray, his strikeout under, under five and a half is plus 108 right now. And a lot of this is because of the Twins philosophy as a pitching staff where they're okay having their starters go pretty short. They'll have them go out there, go five or so innings, 90 or so pitches, and get yanked. I have Gray projected for more than 90 pitches, but 
there's always a possibility that the twins decide to pull the cord pretty early, which should factor into analysis with strikeout props with anybody on this team. Gray himself seems to be regaining some of his form. Um, he's had some better starts recently. He had a really bad stretch back in, I think, earlier June, where he's lot, walking a lot of guys. But if we look at the large sample in nine starts for Gray with more forcing fastballs. He is top five and a half strikeouts just one or just twice. His strikeout rate in that time is under 20%. And I know that he is facing a high strikeout team here in the Mariners, but he's on the road. Gray does have some decently drastic home road splits, at least this year, in terms of his strikeout rate, where it's much higher at home, much lower on the road, around 20% there. So when you combine all these factors together, I have Gray projected for 4.9 strikeouts. Again, the strikeout number here is 5.5, with plus money on the under. And we have multiple paths to get there. It could be that Gray goes out there and goes his full length, but maybe is keeping with this trend where he's not getting a lot of strikeouts. Or we could see a, a twin situation where they yank the guy early as a result of, you know, reading his form and stuff like that. I think the twins are smart in that regard. This is not a bashing of them. I, I am a twins fan. I think that they do play things pretty smart in the way they do that. But I do believe that it leads, it, it leads us to another path to an under on guys like Gray. So I'll take Gray under five and a half plus one Oh eight on top of the McClanahan under five and a half strikeouts minus minus one twelve over at FanDuel Sportsbook. That's all we have as far as MLB goes for today. Again, we're back again tomorrow talking about some, uh, the open championship, but before we do that, got to go back to last week and recap the weekly stuff that is wrapped up for the show here that we discussed here on the show that begins with golf. We have the Genesis Scottish open. We have Brandon Gadula on to preview that Find Brandon on Twitter at Gadula 13 of Rory McElroy getting the win, which is awesome to see. Uh, Rory has been a guy I've been rooting for, for a while. Did not bet him this time. Decided to go Scotty Scheffler. Uh, Brandon recommended Scheffler too. So uh, missed out on the outright for Scheffler who did finish inside the top three. But honestly, if it's Rory McElroy winning, I'm not going to be too upset because it's, it's good to see Rory winning once again. Hopefully he'll be uh, in contention this next week at the open championship as well. Scheffler outright was recommendation for Brandon seven to one Tyrrell Hatton, the other outright at 20 to one. The two props that Brandon had were Lucas Herbert top 20 at plus three twenty, and Padraig Harrington at top 30 at plus three ten. Harrington started awesome. He had a couple rounds in the sixties and then shot a 70 on Saturday, but then Sunday he shot a 74 fell back to 40 seconds. So couldn't get quite get that top 30, but Harrington very good for me in three balls, uh, uh, at least on Friday. I think he chopped on Friday, but um, played really well the first couple of days. So, didn't quite get the cash for Brandon, but being on Harrington, uh, profitable if you found other ways to do so, a.k.a. three balls. The other one, again, Lucas Herbert, top 20, plus 320. Herbert finished 60th, so no cash there, but uh, Brandon's going to a lot of winners already so far this year, so looking forward to talking to him once again tomorrow to break down the Open Championship. Maybe we'll get a discounted number on Scotty Scheffler after the Rory win this past weekend. The NASCAR Cup Series recommendations have not wrapped up yet because that race is going to be today at noon Eastern. So I'll be watching that later on today. Xfinity Series did run. The two bets I had there were Sammy Smith to win at plus 750, Chandler Smith plus 150 for a top five. Chandler Smith did cash. He finished second. So uh, the plus 150 for a top five did cash there. Sammy Smith qualified seventh, went to the back to start the race for adjustments, worked his way up to 15th, then got a speeding penalty, went to the back again, Use the strategy to get back up to the lead. And his car was banged up. He'd gotten clogged up on a restart where there was a massive chain reaction. So his car was kind of banged up. And he was running second or so. But some late race restarts, he got pushed back, I believe, to sixth. But didn't have the winning car. Uh, John Hunter Nemechek, the guy I was below market on, but did have him as the most likely winner. He went on to win. So I think Nemechek would have won that race, even if Smith had not had the two penalties, even if he had not had the damage in the restart, I think the Nemechek just had the best car for that day. So didn't get the Smith at plus 750, but did get the Chandler Smith at plus 150 for a top five. And again, Cup Series stuff still coming up later on today. If you're looking to bet something for Monday, as always, do so responsibly, but do a betting guide over on Number Fire which added some stuff, added some context to the bets we talked about last week. There is a driver I think is a pretty massive value right now, a superstar driver. You can get a pretty good number. So find that over at numberfire.com if you want to get in some NASCAR action before the green flag at noon. 
That's all we got here for today on Covering the Spread. As mentioned, we are back once again tomorrow, breaking down the Open Championship with Brandon Gidula. Find that right here on the Covering the Spread podcast feed, wherever you get your podcasts. If you like what you hear, leave us a five-star rating on Apple Podcasts or over on Spotify. You can also find us on the FanDuel YouTube page or over on the FanDuel TV app. If you've got any questions for me, I am on Twitter at Jim Sonnes, J-I-M-S-A-N-N-E-S. You can also follow the FanDuel Podcast Network at FanDuel Podcast. I want to thank you all for tuning in for today. Good luck to you with your MLB bets or your NASCAR bets today as well. We'll talk to you once again tomorrow to talk about the final major of the year. This has been covering the spread right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network. 